Hi, this is Mark Bodman. In this session, we're going to cover IT for IT version three mapping to CSDM version three. A little bit about the IT for IT standard. This is an open group standard that is a reference architecture for how IT value streams and functional components, uh, which are, uh, are the functions in IT and how they work together. There's a data model there, there's a flow model. You can find out more at the open group slash IT for IT as the URL. The main differences and similarities between CSDM and IT for IT is that the CSDM framework was largely here to facilitate a common model across our different products and services. And we focused on the digital products and services that you provide customers. Obviously, we, we want to be able to map those in a common way across our products. IT for IT, however, it focuses on standardizing the vendor landscape for tooling and understanding what those tools need to do and how they need to integrate. So this was uh, done uh, as a collective from a number of different organizations that came together and helped to find what that might look like. The CSDM use on the platform specific products and integrations that we sell leverage CSDM. So as new products come aboard or we change products, we reflect that change in CSDM. IT for IT is used by large IT organizations to understand what they have, what the gaps in tooling and integrations that they have, and to rationalize those tools uh, from various vendors as they start integrating them or they identify where there's redundancies. There's other uses in IT for IT also for like setting up a operating model for IT and also to understand what functional areas do you outsource or insource, for example. The origins of CSDM were back in 2018 is a collaboration between ServiceNow product teams and uh, getting together on the same standard way of modeling services and the CMDB. So that's that was the background and it's become a very common framework for customers to use to help implement our ServiceNow platform as well. Uh, IT for IT origins were really created by Hewlett Packard, now part of Microfocus, the software division, and uh, going back in the 2013 timeframe. It was there as a guided setup for how products are supposed to work. One of the challenges that HP had is they acquired many different products over time. And as customers started to use them together, they identified there was no framework for that across the different HP customers, they got together and they, they formed IT for IT. And uh, eventually they decided to donate that IP to the open group as a new standard. So I wanted to kind of talk about IT for IT version three as a preliminary snapshot because version three has not been released yet. We're looking at releasing IT for IT version three late 2021. And what you see here is the change in IT for IT from version 2.1 is really centered around digital product in version three. So here we're dealing with a digital value network as the extended integration between all of these different value streams. Um, the value stream strategy portfolio requirement to deploy a uh, request to fill and detect to correct start to migrate over into a capability definition in this particular version. So on the left-hand side, you're seeing uh, the digital value network supported by capabilities in IT basically. And the center of everything is the digital product and that digital product definition we'll get to in a minute, but it's the, the thing you work on through the entire set of capabilities and, and all of the value streams on the right. On the right-hand side, you can see a little bit of an expansion of what a digital product is. And we, we really have it starting uh, at that strategy portfolio. The idea here is you have a portfolio of digital products that you're managing throughout their life cycles. And the idea here is that you have the, in white, uh, the different value streams that interact with those digital products as it goes through these different capability areas. And so what you have here is the explore value stream, for example, that basically this is where you explore new product ideas. You're able to test those ideas before you do your full investment. Um, down in the product in the requirement to deploy side, you have product release where you do the continuous integration, for example. And the output of those continuous integration processes, um, and, and if you're not familiar with that, that's something that comes from the CI CD or the DevOps movement where we've automated a lot of the, the work required to 
merge code and then compile it and make sure that it runs some basic testing. So that continuous integration process is now captured in this product release. Uh, now, if you choose to release or deploy a new digital product, that's where the, the next set of value streams comes in. So these value streams are here to ha handle the release process. Uh, if you choose to take one of your good builds, uh, if you're doing continuous integration, you can choose to release into production periodically. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, you can choose to deploy a new version of those particular uh, digital products uh, through the deployment process, which also integrates with the operations side. So kind of goes through that whole process. You could deploy without releasing, um, which is like a patch or an upgrade, or you can release a new version of a digital product, which comes with new um, a service offer that you can fulfill. So that leads us to the fulfillment value stream. That fulfillment value stream is all about fulfilling interactions with your customers. So how do customers obtain your digital products? Is that an internal catalog? Is it an iOS app store? So those are the different catalogs you can actually provide your offering, your service offer, part of your digital product as a fulfillment process. And last but not least, you have continuous operations. And that's the idea of monitoring and proactively resolving issues, whether it's a capacity issue, a security issue, or anything else that comes up in terms of uh, continuing to make sure the operations of that digital product is good. Um, and th there's a feedback loop also incorporated here, which is the continuous evaluation of your digital products. So to make good portfolio level decisions, you need to have an understanding of how well your digital product is performing in the market. Are customers happy with your digital product? Um, even on the internal consumption, are people using what you're providing internally? Um, and what is the showback or even chargeback from an external customer point of view? So IT for IT doesn't make a distinction between internally consumed and externally consumed digital products, but we do want to make sure that we look at these four capability areas and we have supporting capabilities like uh, risk and compliance and security and uh, asset management, things that are basically applied to all value streams, but and not specific to just one. So those kind of tie in from a supporting capability down at the bottom. So that's IT for IT version three at a high level. And what it's going to be containing is a lot more detail behind the scenes that describes these value streams and it describes the functional components that make up each of these capability areas. So to map this to IT for IT at a high level, we can start with that digital product concept. Um, when we're looking at CSDM, we've got these products and product models here up in the foundations domain. And this is more future oriented as we start to look at different types of products and understanding their life cycle, the life cycle of your internal activities, the life cycles from your vendors, that all matters, okay? So we wanna make sure that that's synchronized there and it is foundational. The next area that we see a mapping is around the um, strategy portfolio domain and largely aligns to things happening in the design domain here in, in uh, CSDM. So, uh, so all those functional capabilities, all those objects are usually managed there. It's part of an enterprise architecture practice or engineering practice. Um, the next area to kind of mention is that digital product and strategy portfolio area also integrate with technical and business services and the portfolios of, of those business services. The idea here being that you have to understand what those portfolios are and organize them appropriately. And uh, that evaluation of a lot of the service mantra, what, where its service management came from is to understand how that customer to provide, consumer to provider interaction happens and managing that to meet SLAs and understand price or showback. The next area to, that overlaps uh, is the service offer and the request to fulfill value stream. So that really maps over to what we have uh, as the request catalog and service offerings, either technical or business. And is, IT for IT doesn't make a distinction between that. So we don't really care what kind of services, as long as it has the supports these value, these different value streams that are articulated and that you have an offering of some sort. You formalize that offering in, in agreement with your consumers. 
Uh, the next area to, that maps over is largely that detect to correct uh, area where we have actual product instances. These are the assets and the integrations between those assets and the configuration of those assets into an application service in our vernacular. So this is uh, where the actual instances are and application services and all the underlying CI types are what we discover and we make sure that we understand what that current state looks like when we're dealing with operational processes. Now, the one thing that also to highlight here is the different types of offerings. And in this case, we have service offerings that are both uh, for people internally or externally, or machines, digital products uh, that uh, consume your digital product. And that would be typically integrations, APIs, things that are connecting these digital products in some machine to machine interface. And so the, the important thing that we've identified in IT for IT work is that um, these digital products all work together in some way, but there are, they may be autonomous or part of a larger um, microservices architecture where they're integrated and loosely coupled. So all that machine integrations are, are kind of another way to manage consumer provider relationships. And we're proposing here as part of IT for IT version three is like to be more formalized about that. Now, when we started to create IT for IT version three, we needed to define what a digital product was. And so there's a white paper that's published that provides that definition. And this is uh, largely on the left-hand side where every digital product instance needs to understand the, the contract. Basically, how am I going to provide this digital product to my consumers? So that way you see the different interaction methods that could be human or machine interfaces. Uh, to other digital products. Down below, however, as part of your particular digital product instances, you have systems and you have code and compute uh, the various devices that might be actually involved, information obviously that's stored and managed. So all of those systems basically are part of that particular digital product portfolio and uh, understanding how those products are, are allocated to individual uh, consumers, they can be a, a device that you ship and you wear on your body like a smartwatch, or those systems can be just a user uh, record that you provide a human to be able to log in and interact with your systems and your backend systems. And then down below that, you have interactions with other digital products. So the important thing here is that it is a ch dependency chain that dig one digital product has dependencies on, on other digital products, but also dependents that depend on those digital products. So we, uh, this forms a long chain and a mesh, if you will, of interactions that's really hard to manage in a large IT organization. So it's important that we formalize this and we do inst institute contract language here where we define things like your SLAs, price, uh, outcomes. And, and the other thing too, as part of your digital product instances, you have shared resources and teams that are staffing these. And the idea here is that uh, if you go to a teams-based mode of, of delivery, you have uh, uh, people staffing different positions on that team from development, engineering, support, delivery staff. And then we have some shared things in a large organization, distribution catalogs might be one internal catalog everybody uses, or it could be product catalog that is on your Android. So understanding all these shared resources and how th these digital product instances are actually managed in mass, uh, you have to consider the shared resource implications uh, and requirements as well. So see how IT for IT digital product definition maps over to CSDM. What we do is we have the main interaction here with the products and product models. So we have different types of products and CSDM supported software, hardware, applications. And so that's kind of the, the main mapping, but it also incorporates things that you would see typically in the technical or business service domain. So we don't make a big distinction when we go to product orientation in these things. And then one more thing gets absorbed here in the definition too. It's the ap business application. So you see, we don't necessarily have an application defined here in the digital product instance, but we do have systems and systems corresponds to the application service. And the interactions to your consumers corresponds to the technical and business service offering. So how do you provide those to your consumers? What does that offer look like? And what is the basic understanding of uh, the systems that you have access to in, in a management of the SLA or OLAs? Now, the systems 
will map best to the application service in this particular diagram. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that I, I commonly, when I explain application services, I have to explain it from a systems point of view because that's pretty much what it does. When we do service mapping, for example, or you put create a diagram in the CMDB, you're basically articulating the structure of a system, a systems diagram, and that's what app services basically does, deals with. And last but not least, we have those systems that comprise of underlying resources. Now think of these are the resources that you own as a company and have to manage as part of that system. It's not the interaction with other systems like an API or dependency of an app on a platform, but it is the code that you have to manage or device that you have to manage, whether it be on in, in your data center in the cloud or in the possession of your customer. So all of that has to be understood. So thank you very much for the IT4IT version three mapping to CSDM version three. Hopefully this has been helpful.